Hey guys and welcome back. Let's look at something super interesting today. Uh, how to create ad hoc reporting. I'm sure a lot of users have asked you all, how can, can you create a table where the user themselves can actually input the dimensions and variables that they're interested in and then that populates in your table. So essentially creating an ad hoc reporting. Now it's quite simple uh, if you have self-service enabled, but if you don't have self-service enabled, uh, there are a couple of ways to do it. I think I have, I've shown another way how to do it using variables and stuff, but but there's another way. Um, essentially what we're going to do is as the user selects, the table here gets populated, right? So essentially when the user doesn't make a selection, there's nothing. But when the user makes a selection, only those particular fields get populated in the table. Otherwise, it's blank. And I think this is really cool. Let's see how to do it. Let's start from scratch, shall we? So let's create a dimension list first. And it's an inline load because we are entering all the values over here. Dimension list. And then I'm going to start putting in the names of the fields that I want. So it would be it would be much easier if you put in the same name so you know which dimension you want the user to select, right? So I'm gonna call a couple of them. So I'm gonna say customer ID. You can pretty much name this anything and then connect it to uh, different fields that you want in the front end, right? But over here, I'm gonna say customer name. I want product name, good. So these are my dimension list. I'm going to load this. When I go into my data model viewer here, I actually see that a new table has been created with the names of the dimensions that I've written down in my table. And it's a standalone table right here. It's not really connected to anything and it doesn't really do anything when you click on it right now, but we're going to change that very soon. Let's go into your front end. Let's go to our charts. Let's just pull in a table and to make our selections, we need to add in well, a filter pane, right? So I'm going to add in a filter pane and here I'm going to connect my dimension list. So essentially this list over here, which is a standalone table, I'm going to call that in my filter and all of these names will show up there. Go in here and say my dimension list is the filter. Now, when I click on the dimension list, you get the names that you have created in your table. What do we need to do now in this table? I need to first add those fields that I want, right? Dimension, I want country, I want customer ID, I want customer name, I want product name. So these are the selections that I'm allowing the users to do. So here I'm going to go in, I'm going to say my customer ID, customer name, product name, country. So now I have these fields, I've added the fields and I have those fields over here. But of course, when I make selections, nothing happens. Why? Because it's a standalone table over here. Perfect. Makes complete sense, right? And what we need to do is we need to connect these selections to the dimensions that you have added to the table. So when the user selects customer ID, I want this particular field to show up. Otherwise, I don't want anything to be shown. So I'm going to go back into my table and here I have my dimension called customer ID. I'm going to go in and here we have something called show column if and here we're going to put in a condition. So essentially what we're going to say is, hey, from the dimension list, if the user selects customer ID, then I want the customer ID dimension over here in this table to be shown or the customer ID column to be shown. When the user makes selections in the dimension list, first we want to concatenate all of them. For example, if the user makes multiple selections, right? We want to bring in the values that the user has, has selected. So first I'm going to say whatever the dimension list selections are, well, um, I want it to be concatenated first, right? So I'm going to put this inside a concatenate, put in a separator like this, which essentially says that when a user makes multiple selections in the dropdown, select it and put into one string, which is separated by a separator here. And then what, what are you going to do? Well, I'm just going to say that if once a user makes a selection while matches to customer ID, then in that case, I want the table to be shown, right? Let's see if it works. I'm going to click on apply. Now you see that that particular table isn't shown here. If you go here to edit, it says that the calculation condition is not fulfilled. That's exactly right, because in this, the dimension list has not been selected. So the moment I select it, customer ID shows up and you see that calculation is actually shown. Let's take it a step further. The problem with while match is that it doesn't work when I continuously add multiple selections. 
which you will obviously do, right? That's the whole point of doing this ad hoc reporting. We could substitute this with a better function called substring count. So what does substring count do? When the dimension list, all the selections are concatenated, if it finds the string customer ID in it, then the value output over here will be one, which essentially means that this column should be shown. So whenever it doesn't find the string, then it makes this column zero and this column is hidden. When I click on apply, I make a selection here, which is not customer ID then customer ID disappears here. If you take away any selection here, now customer ID al already shows up here, right? But you could change that by going in. We could add an extra condition saying that if get selected count, that is if a user makes a selection in that dimension list. So I could essentially say get selected count for my field, which is dimension list greater than zero and substring. Then in that case, I want the output to be one, otherwise, zero so now if i click on apply the calculation condition is automatically not fulfilled right so it's hidden i don't see customer id and when i click on it it shows up good now let's do that for all three of them so i could go here i'm just gonna copy it because i'm super lazy and i'm gonna put it to my rest of the fields basically just make sure that the string over here should be the same as the substring condition that you have. Good, so now we don't see anything here. It says incomplete visualization because when you go here, none of the calculation condition is fulfilled. And what is the calculation condition? Get selected count is greater than zero. So at least one selection has to be made in the dimension list. And for each of the column, the condition should meet that particular column's name. So that is customer ID in this case. So I'm going to click on apply, edit, and let's see if it works. Now I click on country and then country shows up. Click on customer ID and now customer ID has shown up. So now essentially the users can just go in and select the names of the fields that they want and that fields get populated. Super cool, right? We could do one small change here. That is, we could tell the users that, hey, this table is not really shown because you haven't made a selection here. So let's go to edit, add-ons. Let's go to data handling. And here in calculation condition, I could say that only show this particular table if get selected count, that is the user makes any kind of selections in dimension list is greater than zero. I want it to be one, which means that I want this particular table to be shown, otherwise, zero i'm gonna click on apply the reason this table is like this because the calculation condition is not fulfilled i could actually give a display message here let's go in and say that the display message is good now click on apply and it screams at you and says hey you haven't made a selection so make a selection and it will show up now since we give an overall condition that is the calculation condition here saying the get selected count has to be greater than zero you could actually go in here and you could take away the if, because now this if really doesn't matter because the table is hidden anyway, right? Unless the user makes a selection here, the table is hidden. So you don't really need it. You could take this away and just leave the substring and it would work exactly the same. So now the calculation condition here is actually not fulfilled, but it doesn't show anyway, because overall you're telling the table is not to be shown. Pretty darn cool, right? Are you with me? Good. Let's add some measures now. Let me create two measures that I actually want to call. So I'm just going to go here. I'm going to say, instead of writing the measure directly in my column, I'm just going to create a master item. Uh, I'm just going to say, this is my average sales average of, I'm just going to save it. And then I'm going to create total sales, sum of sales amount. Good. Now I have two measures that I can actually call. And then the process is exactly the same. I'm going to create a measure list so i've created measure list i'm going to give the names for two measures load it so now i have two tables here go into my charts go into filter pane i'm going to drag and drop another one here i'm going to call my measure list so when the user selects this i have the two names that i've called in my measure list over here good and then i need to add the measures that i want to connect these two fields too right so when the user makes the selection what needs to be activated here so let's call those two so i'm going to go to a table i've already created a master measure right so i could go in here i'm going to say column measure 
I have two that are created. I'm going to call those two measure total sales. All right, good. Now I need to give the exact same calculation condition essentially. So I'm going to go into show column if, and here I'm going to say if the substring count has been selected from my drop down measure list, then in that case, the value of this will be one. So this particular column will be shown, right? Let me just copy this. So I'm going to click on apply. And now when I make a selection here and make a selection here, then only that particular table is shown. Now we have again, the same kind of issue because when this table is shown, both are, none of the selections are made here. So I could go in and add if get selected count, right? If get selected count is greater than one for these two as well, then in that case, I want it to be shown over here. Cool, right? Um, we're almost there. That's exactly what we want. We could do one small thing. That is, we could go into add-ons here and here we could say that not only if get selected count for dimension list is greater than zero, we could also say, and get selected count for the measure list greater than zero. Then only in that case, the columns are going to be shown. So display message as well, dimension list and measure list you could change it to an or that is if you want to show the measures without affecting the dimension list or if you want to show dimensions without anybody making a selection in the measure list you could that's up to you it's totally up to you right you could do instead of an and you could put an or over here or you could just have these and say yeah just make the selections and those columns will show up so now when i take it away now when i click on one dimension Nothing shows up because I've said make a selection both in dimension list and measure list because I've said get selected count dimension list greater than zero and measure list greater than zero. So now when I click on measure list, it shows up. Now the table is activated. Voila, magic. I've, I've actually got a lot of requests where the users want to be able to select the tables that they are interested in and not have a predefined table. So this can be really helpful. Now you have another tool in your arsenal um, to make your users basically happy. So I hope this was super helpful. Super appreciated if you left a like. Check out all the links below. I'll see you in the next one. Yeah, peace.